Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to chapter 25 once again. Today we are on part 3 talking about the male reproductive system. And we were talking specifically about the pathways involved of the sperm and what each of the different parts along the way do. Okay, so far we started in the testes went through the epididymis and up the vas deferens to the ampulla. If you missed any of that, make sure you go back and double check. Okay, so up the vas deferens is where we went over to the ampulla. Okay, and we started to talk about the seminal vesicle, which is this gland right here next to the ampulla and you will see that the two empty together into one passageway. Okay, um, so this gland is kind of off to the side and it will be injecting things into the passageway. Okay, now the seminal vesicle, remember there's another one on the other side, so the seminal vesicles actually are going to be making a lot of the semen. They are going to be making about 75% uh, or two-thirds to, to uh, three-quarters of the semen, the fluid that goes along with the sperm. Okay, now the fluid coming from the seminal vesicle is basic or you want to say alkaline, it has a higher pH uh, as opposed to acidic, so it is basic. And primarily what that part of it that de uh, is for is the female's body is actually somewhat acidic. So the seminal vesicle is going to add something basic to the semen so that the sperm are not going to immediately be killed by the acidic environment in the female. Other things that are secreted by the seminal vesicle include things like proteins, enzymes, vitamins, and especially the fructose, which if you remember is a type of sugar. Uh, because the sperm are not being cared for by the Sertoli cells being given those nutrients, they start using up their supply of energy by this point. So the seminal vesicle gives the semen fructose, sugar, so that the sperm have the nutrients to continue and won't die just from a lack of energy. Okay, then they go through the ejaculatory duct, which is just a passageway. Now, if you notice this structure right here, that is the prostate gland. And the ejaculatory ducts actually go through the prostate gland. Okay, so there's one on this side, there's one on the other side, and they go through the prostate. Now the prostate you'll see is kind of behind and below where the bladder is. Um, that is why if as people age they have prostate issues with inflammation or something like that, uh, it actually can cause urinary issues as well. Now the prostate gland has another function in addition to um, the seminal vesicles. Uh, it, this is where most of the rest of the fluids related to the semen are going to come from. Again, there are vitamins, especially vitamin C and zinc, which if you know your nutrition are good for a healthy immune system. So it may have something to do with protection there. Um, it also has specific enzymes in order to keep the semen from solidifying. Uh, semen as a whole starts becoming 
uh, really thick and sticky. So the prostate enzymes keep it more fluid. That way the sperm have the ability to continue to move, otherwise they would get stuck. Also, just like the seminal vesicle, it does have a basic substance in it in order to help neutralize the acidity when it comes to the female. Now, if you pay attention to the structure of the bladder, you'll notice the urethra comes down right here. And the urethra is what carries the urine from the bladder to outside of the body. Now, at this point, the semen is going to be enter or the, the semen and the sperm is going to be entering the urethra. Now, at that moment, the valve up near the bladder actually blocks off the urethra coming from the bladder so that urine and semen cannot go through at the same time. However, because there would be res residual urine in the urethra, you have this little gland right here that's very small, that's right as the semen and sperm are entering the urethra called the bulbo-urethral gland. Bulbo, you know, little ball, urethral on the urethra. And it also is known as the Cowper's gland because Mr. Cowper, of course, identified it. Now, the bulbo-urethral gland or the Cowper's gland, again, adds a little bit to the semen, but primarily what it's going to be doing at this point is it's going to be adding a neutralizer to the urethra so that the acidity of the urine is neutralized. Otherwise, the sperm and semen would be killed upon entering the urethra because even though uh, the individual wouldn't be urinating, there would still be little bits of urine in the pathway. So the bubble urethral gland actually will neutralize the urine so that the sperm stay alive. Also, there are fluids added. Uh, the urethra itself, being acidic, does not have a lot of uh, mucus in it like a lot of the body does. So the bubble urethral gland actually will add some mucus as well as some other cells will add mucus in the urethra so that the sperm will be able to continue their travel. Okay, so the bubble urethral gland right here adding that in. Now the rest of the journey is down through the urethra and out from the body. Okay, so just to kind of review, you go from the testes up to the top of the epididymis, down and around, vas deferens, which goes up and around the sides of the bladder, to the ampulla where it just kind of slows down, seminal vesicle is adding semen, into the ejaculatory duct. The prostate is adding its part of the semen. The bulbo-urethral gland is adding the neutralizer and other things in. And then the sperm and the semen are able to come out of the penis and out of the body. Um, just as kind of a side note, uh, the prepuce or the foreskin of the penis covers the glands, which is the end of the penis. Um, you've probably heard of circumcision uh, related in the Old Testament and even in modern times now. That is simply the removal of that tissue. Um, there is debate over whether that is a good thing or not. Um, some people have it removed, some people don't. It is pretty standard though for it to be removed. Otherwise, there tends to be an infection and cleanliness issues, especially 
with little boys. Um, but that is the skin that is removed. Okay. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the male reproductive system. We next time will be beginning the female reproductive system. Okay, until next time.